Welcome back to Across the Board with Ian the Colonel here on hawkradio.org and acrosstheboardradio.com. Now, Colonel, when I think of some of the greatest bands out there, I've got to think of things like longevity and bands that are, have influenced Influence. other bands. Okay, Absolutely. So then if you say to me, hey, pick a band that's been around for a while and is still putting out great music today, okay, let's go two decades, let's go 20 years, all right, take that. Say they're still influencing some of the top bands today, like Avenged Sevenfold, Rise Against, punk bands. One of the top bands that comes out in my mind, Strung Out. Yeah, absolutely. Jordan Burns, the drummer for Strung Out, is with us right now. Jordan, welcome to the show, brother. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Doing good, great, good. man. And, uh, you know, it's a good day for us. We are huge, huge uh, Strung Out fans. And, uh, you know, all the albums you guys have put out, kind of culminating in Top Contenders, which just came out last year. Top Contenders, the best right. of Strung Out. Uh, 23 songs on this thing, spanning your entire career, and three new songs. Here we are, Saturday Night and City Lights. Not only are the greats on there, like Cemetery and Analog, two of my favorites of all time, but City Lights, one of the brand new ones, love this song. Can't get it out of my head, man. Awesome. Well, that's good to hear. And hopefully, you know, I think it's being received very well from uh, all of our fans. And the, uh, the album has actually been selling really well. And I'm super stoked on it because... Uh, for me personally, and I think I speak for the rest of the guys too, you know, we were really excited to remix these songs. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, it gave all these songs like a, a, a new life. And, uh, you know, it got a more modern mix to them. And a lot of things got tuned up. And I'm, I'm really stoked on the album. And, you know, uh, Jake and myself, like, worked on that timeline that got put together. And, of course, all the tattoos. You know, there's about 500 fan tattoos included in the thing and i just think uh overall it's a, a really cool album and even if you're a first time listener of strong out i think it's a it's a, a good album to pick up to uh you know get a glimpse into our career and what we've done and stuff yeah not only that but it's one of those that you know in these days of itunes and, and things like that people buy singles Right. This album, you, you, can't, you can't. You have to get them all 23, man. It's just an incredible listen from beginning to end. And to hear, you know, the, the entire anthology, the I think it's just, career. yeah, it's, it's yeah. incredible. So, but Jordan, let me ask you, you're a, you're a big, you know, drummer, obviously, uh, of the band. One of your heroes I've read is Tommy Lee. Have you tried playing upside down like you used to back in the day? Well, you know, sometimes I, you know, like to, you know, hang my drums from the ceiling in my bedroom and <laughs> play upside down nude. Nice. So once in a while, you Wait, know, I try going? that out. You know, so uh, you know, it's it's all it's all influenced by Tommy Lee. You know, he he does it in a song, and I just thought I'd take it a step <laughs> further and just you know go nude. So yeah, you know, me and Tommy are both badass like that, and uh, that's how he's influenced. <laughs> Moto Triple X style. That's actually you know you you actually. Uh, we're an owner of one of the owners of Moto Triple X, the motocross, supercross, freestyle team uh, back in the day as well, which has is, is been off the scene for a while, but we, will, we are hoping it'll come back. Um, but, uh, yeah, Moto Triple X style, doing the drums there. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on Deegan now for the first time having his own official team uh, as an owner now as well. So, you know, how that's sort of the genesis of that's kind of come about. So. Uh, well, I definitely have some thoughts on that. Okay. For sure. <laughs> Good. All right. So, uh, all right. So, uh, so hang but on to my 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 immediate thought on that is uh, is it bums me out because I I know that Metal Militia Motor Triple X would make for an awesome team mm -hmm. and you know obviously you know I'm not going to try and explain what the ins and outs of of what led to you know the uh, the collapse of our team right. but you know a lot of like inner partnership type stuff and things like that but. Um, you know, just knowing how big Metal Militia has went, and, uh, you know, it would have been a, a great pairing for Metal Militia Motor Triple X to go. Now, I think it's cool that, you know, Deegan's getting involved with uh, the whole Supercross race program again, but I don't look at, like, you know, Star Racing and Valley Motorsports as, like, this, you know... Privateer. Um, killer spot for like motor you know for uh for the metal militia team to be but i don't know so it's interesting i just obviously i look at it from a different outlook just you know from where we came from and you know if 
Brian was able to, uh, I'm sure if we did have a team that it would be discussed, you know, that would, it would at least be up for discussion to make it, you know, the Metal Militia Motor Triple X team or, and, uh, and what fun we could have. Cause, you know, I would like to get back to the roots of just f- up. <laughs> yeah, that's what we were about in yeah. the in the original days of our team. When we started out, we just we were original and we did things that nobody had ever done. And we brought things to the table that nobody ever had seen. You know? And sure. uh so I miss a lot of the old days and I know Brian had you know, Brian had a lot of good times and as well as Brian Swank, you know, that's who we started the mm-hmm. team with, Brian Deegan and Brian Swank. And, yep. And uh, we definitely had a, a lot of really, really good times with the team. And, you know, our team, just knowing that our team is the most successful privateer team ever, uh, that's a pretty cool thing in itself. I just wish we could uh, we could get back into it a bit and, and uh, get some, some new things sorted out and do something else. But, you know, it takes a lot of money and a lot of time and... and uh, who knows if uh, I don't know if a Motor Triple X team will ever get back going, but I I have uh, the fantasy that I still am trying to work out, you know, keeping Motor Triple X alive somehow because it's been pretty dead for the last three or four years, and that is definitely due to uh, a lot of inner partnership bull that has mm-hmm. went down, and and it's just. It has me really frustrated and pissed off right now. I've been trying to deal with it for like the last year, and uh, I don't know. I don't need to go much deeper than that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Colonel, i got to tell you, Jordan, it's not very often we get drummers on the show. A lot of times we'll get the vocalist or we'll get the guitarist, and I'm a drummer myself, so I appreciate this a lot. And uh, I know one of the big things for you was uh, you felt really accomplished when you got voted uh, – Runner up, I think it was. It's in uh, Drum Magazine in 2003 as best drummer. Mm-hmm. I can tell you, yeah. man, that's a hell of an accomplishment. It really is. Well, well, I think it's really cool. And and how I look at that, I mean, I've wound up in those uh, in those drummer, uh, you know, best punk drummer awards. I've I've wound up in them four times now. And you know, the first time I thought it was just a total fluke. And every time it happens, it's it's badass. You know, and they actually have started the voting, I guess for. Uh, for the new 2012 awards for, you know, Drum Magazine and, and Modern Drummer. And I don't know, like, it's it's very honoring to be a part of that and to know that so many people are stoked on your drumming. And I think of, you know, like, when I get in the mix there with, say, like, you know, Travis Barker or Josh Freeze or, yeah. you know, some of these guys like that, uh, I, I look at myself like, well, I'm the little peon guy comp- in comparison to those guys, you know. <laughs> Blank's obviously sold, you know, gazillions of records, and the guy's a megastar. So for me to be in the mix with those kind of people is, is pretty cool. Uh, but overall, yeah, it's just really honoring that people, uh, you know, look up to and respect my drumming so much. It's pretty cool. And I know you're being humble about it, but I really do think you deserve to be there. I mean, that, that's that's a hell of a crew to be hanging with, and you're right there in the mix with them, and I definitely agree that you need, that you deserve to be there. Yeah, and talking about how badass this man is, again, Jordan Burns, drummer for Strung Out. Jordan, folks, once broke his foot, okay, went on, and the band was going to have a replacement drummer in just for the tour for a few gigs. Jordan, you actually learned to play, started play, practicing with your left foot, correct, and went on stage and did an entire six weeks tour with your left foot. Is that right? Well, that is correct. And you know, <laughs> I, I broke my I broke my foot. I kind of, I made the mistake of going uh, of uh, of riding out at the track, and I crashed over a big double, and uh, you know, broke my foot. So, like, it was looking like the tour was over. And we we had a, a drummer that was filling in, and we were practicing at my house at the time, and. Basically, I was sitting in there getting all pissed off, and, you know, uh, I had my my drum tech come over and set up a kit for me, and I, I just started playing left foot, and and uh, I told my band, like, hey, come over, I want to jam and try this out. So, basically, I, I ended up, uh, you know, practicing really hard to pull it off, and, and I had to clip the other drummer and tell him, like, hey, sorry, I know you put your time in, but I'm going on tour. That's so impressive. It, it ended up working out, 
and uh, it was really hard. It was really challenging, but, you know, as time went on, it, it was cool, and it was a bit of a bummer being on crutches. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, when it was done and over, it was for sure a uh, a good, heartfelt accomplishment. You know, you're like, F- yeah, I did this. I pulled it off. And, of course, you know, a lot of people remember it, and a lot of people, you know, thought it was badass. And, you know, I, I don't think I did it to be badass. I did it because... It's my band, and I didn't want anyone else, you know, f- trying to fill my shoes. I wanted to be on the road. Yeah, I'm a f- badass. <laughs> and I'm telling you, because it, the the badassery of that it ranks right up there with once I saw Chad Smith uh, from the Chili Peppers play with a broken arm. He kept playing. He played the whole set, never missed a beat with a with a broken arm. Wow, wow. that that's yeah. that's too great drumming accomplishments of the world right there. That goes in the uh, in the drumming hall of fame, I, if you will. You're a god, not man. Travis, not that Travis needs any more props, but I believe he did it, too. Did he really? Oh, that's right, he did. That, the plane I forgot crash, about that. Think, yeah, right? he did. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> the plane crash is kind of a, yeah, that's a, that's a big that's one as right, well, yeah. I'd say. So. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, so we were talking about Moto Triple X as well, and, uh, you know, how I, I'm such a huge, huge, uh, you know, Moto fan. Uh, I've been going to races for years, ride myself. Let me ask you this. I actually heard the other day uh, Ryan Hughes was on another radio show talking about the best racer of all time versus the best rider of all time. And he said that he thought, I think I agree with this, that the best rider of all time is James Stewart, but the best racer of all time is Ricky Carmichael. What do you think? Well, I think... I think that that would be fairly accurate mm-hmm. at this point because uh, you got to look at what Carmichael accomplished in the time frame and stuff. And, and uh, you know, uh, Stewart, you know, has been a little more out of control and, and not so consistent like Carmichael was. So, you know, you can't leave McGrath out of the picture either, For of sure. course. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I, th- I think that would be fairly accurate. But I think... Stewart does have the opportunity to maybe possibly uh, take those reins. But, you know, there's a lot of guys. I don't think you can count Villapato out now either. He's Absolutely. just like, he's, he's been killing it. And, and it, this this season's going to be a really good uh, race season because, you know, it's too bad Kennard got hurt. Um, unfortunately, I hate to say it, but, you know, the good Lord Jesus Christ did not save him on that one. But uh, I think uh, he's he's faster than all hell you know he's he's a, another top five contender i think and it's it's a bummer to see him uh not in the mix but there's i think there's definitely four guys that can win a race at any given time so it's going to be a really good season <laughs> you're right, you're right over there, e. <laughs> yeah i got a, I got a hell of a laugh out of that uh, well well said uh jordan um <laughs> colonel guy i was gonna say jordan who do you think is the, the best uh probably the most unknown but promising rider out right now in your opinion unknown let's see well Slight, there's a lot of moderately unknown yeah, like you guys had back there's in the a day. really lot of uh, hot up and comers right now you know um you could look at like darren durham yeah uh who you know just got on he, he had a he had a really good year last night so pro circuit picked him up and i think he's going to be really fast in the uh in the 250 class there's you know younger ones like uh I think like uh, Justin Bogle and and you know it sucked. Ken Roxon got hurt because yeah. he was going to be really fast. Uh, there's a ton of guys, you know. There's definitely a ton of guys. Now let me ask you: when, back when you were hiring riders with Moto Triple X, did you look for guys that sort of fit the persona of Moto Triple X? You know that freestyle, you know crazy guy like Deegan, like Josh Summy, kind of fit you guys. You know, full of tattoos and all that. Or I mean, you also had riders like Tim Ferry though, who's sort of more clean cut. Right. You know, what, what was the decision making going into that? Well, obviously, as time went on, you know, things changed, and we got we tried to get more serious about about racing. You know, so. I don't think it was necessarily uh, just about an image thing. We want we actually wanted to win races, but you know we ended up with a lot of riders, you know that uh, you know people had no confidence in, and they weren't getting rides, and we took them on, you know. So yeah. that's why, like, it was badass to have you know guys like Larry Ward and 
you know, Tim Ferry, and, you know, we had Phil Lawrence in the past, and we've yeah. had so many guys through our team. It's insane when you think about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think the accomplishments of our team have been pretty amazing. You know, we had Damon Huffman. You know, we've won uh, top privateer awards, like, many, many years in a row. And, uh, you know, we've won an outdoor national. We've won a supercross. Um, it's pretty amazing for a little independent team, you know. And uh, I, I, did, I definitely look back, and I look back at the freestyle riders that we had, too. You know, Kerry Hart and, and uh, Sink Myers, uh, you know, Deegan, of course, um, Endless, Endless, Metzger. <laughs> Every, everybody has been through our program, you know. Pretty much, yeah. You, you guys had such, and that's, I have such respect for what you guys did as a privateer team, and, and just uh, people have no idea how much work, how much energy, how much money goes into motocross, supercross. Uh, it's, it seems like a glamorous lifestyle. There's a lot of uh, grinding and, you know, people. Yeah, a it's lot pretty of intense, life... you know. <clears throat> yeah. And the industry just fought us the whole time. So there was a lot of frustration the whole time, you know. Yeah. I mean, we'd, we'd win privateer, you know, we'd have top privateer, and we'd have a killer team, and, and then, you know, AMA puts out all these awards and, Never once did we get award, awarded, you know, yeah. pri- uh, team of the year. They'd always give it to someone else and just be like, this is a joke. You know, it's just stupid politics behind the scenes, which is life, I guess, you know. Well, it happens in, uh, in all forms of, uh, you know, uh, daily work or whatever, you know. Yeah, but, you know, that shifts actually seamlessly back into Strung Out. You know, you guys have been a quote-unquote independent band. You know, you've been with... Uh, you know, Fat Mike and Fat Records for most of your careers, and you know, which is still a basically independent label, and right, right. but still successful. I mean, one of the most successful independent bands of all time. You know, you guys don't do it the way that you know the industry wants it to be done. You just do what the hell you want to do, what you know best, and you make it work. And and that's something that that we appreciate as fans of music, of motocross, and of everything. And you know, another thing that that I have a lot of respect for you guys with is that even to this day, um, you know. Uh, Jim Cherry, who, uh, you know, unfortunately passed away uh, back in 2002, left the band and then he passed away. But you still list him on albums as playing the bass. Um, and I think that's a great honor that you guys put out there. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, obviously he, he started the band. Right. Um, so, you know, I don't think anyone's forgot about him. You know, his, his music and his songs will always, will always live on and, and uh, you know, He'll always be a part of Strong Out, of course. Um, you know, and what everything that happened with him, you know, is unfortunate, but uh, I guess it happens, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, let's talk about the future of Strung Out. You know, like we said, uh, you know, Top Contenders, the best of Strung Out is out right now, came out last year. Go get it iTunes, get, but the, get the whole get, album. Get the album. Don't, get the don't album. Get it from iTunes. Yeah, don't get, just get, get it. So you can get the album artwork and everything like he Yeah, I have the physical earlier. CD in my right. hand right now. I'm looking at it. Um, I'm about to pop it back in my CD player. Uh, love it. But what else is coming up on the horizon here? You know, future albums, tours, that kind of thing. What can we look forward to? Well, the, the most immediate thing that we have coming up is we're going to uh, Australia for the Soundwave Festival, which is oh, going to be sick. insane. Absolutely. You know, then we're looking to uh, maybe get to Japan after that. We want to get to some places that we haven't been. Like, it would be nice to get to Mexico. <laughs> people from, like, people from like Indonesia are talking to us. And, nice. And, uh, and Japan. And, and, and uh, we just, just want to do more touring. Uh, you know, we're, obviously we're going to... Uh, we want to make another album. Hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully we'll pull off doing that by by the end of the year sometime. Great. And, uh, you know, no one's ready to stop, which is cool, and I think everyone still has a lot of uh, inner creativity within them. And, uh, you know, that's definitely one of the important things of, uh, of going on and continuing. For sure. You know, you got to still enjoy it and, uh, and have fun. And, uh, you know, it can't become like a job, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like... You still got to you still got to love music. I mean, there's a lot of ups and downs and stuff within, you know, staying together and uh and we've been through thick and thin, of course. And uh, you know, we're we're all we're all still down and want to continue on. So, 
you know, and we, we're, we're waiting for, for some of these uh, other bands, you know, that you've said that we've been, you know, an influence to. to uh, the rise Against, Avengers you know, Sevenfold. Yeah. yeah, like maybe scratch our back a little bit and, you know, offer us a tour or something. I don't, seems like it's never going to happen. I don't know. It kind of bums me out sometimes. It would be but, a sick tour, though. But uh, what can you do? <laughs> I mean, we, I would love, you know, for Rise Against to take us on tour. Uh, I would love for Event Sevenfold to take us on tour, although, you know, it might be a little bit different. But, you know, bands like that, they, they cite us as, like, influences. And, uh, you know, even Blank. I mean, Blank used to run strung out stickers on their guitar. Tom did. Right. But it's like, I know he used to like our band. But uh, ever since they blew up, you know, we've never played with them or nothing. So it would be nice. I know that there's just tons of inner politics that go down with all all the stuff. And there's, you know, 10 million bands that want to get on tour with bands like that. So it's just part of the game, I guess. You know, we're not going to let that stop us. And we'll just keep on doing our thing. And, you know, we had a great tour last year with... Uh, with uh face to face you know we did about two and a half months with them and that was a really good package to team up with you know well we can't wait to see i you know i've been a fan for years but i've never been able to see you play live uh so i'm really looking forward to being able to you know have that opportunity sometime in the future and we'll definitely have you guys back on as soon as uh, we can talk about the new album at the end of the year well jordan again we appreciate it uh strung out top contenders is the newest album get that it's got all you know most of the greatest hits but there's so many good songs get the back catalog as well keep doing what you do man uh we appreciate it like i said i'm gonna go listen to uh city lights right now um just love everything you guys put out but buy the whole album check out the tattoo art in it it's cool the the tattoo on the guy's back on the back of the cd is pretty cool too and uh but we appreciate it man and good luck with everything and i'm gonna hold you to it you get on your bike this weekend i'm gonna fire up my 125 this weekend (laughs) time to go riding right on all right, well, bro. if anyone wants to uh, send us a message or leave us any comments or feedback or whatever, jump on our uh, Facebook page at facebook.com slash strung out. Sounds good, man. Do that. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Ian the Colonel here on Across the Board on hawkradio.org and acrosstheboardradio.com.